The sphenoid and the ethmoid bone make up two bones of the skull that are a little complicated in their placement and description. Um, so here's the sphenoid bone, and above my line I have the superior view, which means I'm looking down on it. And if you see over here is a blown up version of how it's placed in the skull. So this bordering edge kind of borders that anterior fossa, um, and then this posterior edge is right here, almost back here to the occipital bone. And right up here, we've got the Sela tersica. And this is kind of curved in and then kind of rolls down again. So it's shaped like a saddle. And that's what this means. It actually means Turkish saddle. And this is where our pituitary gland of the brain actually sits. So the sphenoid bone makes up this major part of this middle cranial fossa with these two larger wings out here, making up kind of the outside of the calvario or the bottom of the skull. There are two major wings. So we've got the lesser wing, which is entirely internal of the skull. So there's these two lesser wings. They're almost shark projections. You can see them in this posterior view. So this posterior view, we did a coronal cut where we cut off the back half of the skull here. And you can see this posterior body portion is right here. Here's the Sela tersica would be in here. We can't see it very well from this view, but you can see the lesser wing here, both internal in the skull. And then this greater wing here is going to sit right next to the temporal and the uh, facial bones up this way um, and make up kind of an external portion of the skull. And so you can see this greater wing out here. There were several foramen in here. So we've got the optical canal inside of the sphenoid bone. This is going to be where the optic nerve comes from the eyes into here and then they cross over before joining with the brain. The ethmoid bone is right behind the nasal bones. So this is internal to the kind of the bridge of the nose. There's a few prominent features here. We've got this large perpendicular plate, which you can see comes down here. Uh, so obviously we would have a nose here. Um, and so this nasal plate is going to be an internal divider of the left and right uh, nasal septum. We've got this horizontal cribriform plate, so that's all this area with these little tiny holes in it. And this is where the olfactory bulbs of the brain actually sit and then lead back to the brain to uh, send sensory information from your sense of smell or olfaction. And then we have these labyrinth which are a series of small holes, um, a maze of kind of air spaces, and these make up what's called the ethmoid sinus. Inside of here, so this is the actual nasal passageway right here, um, so the air you breathe in comes in through this bone. We have these superior and middle, so superior and middle nasal concha. Concha is single, conche is plural, they're the same word, and these create uh, air spaces through here where the air that comes in through the nose actually travels through these conchae and the mucous membranes surrounding these help capture the dust or dirt particles that are coming through the air you breathe in. So take a moment. It's really important to practice naming the different structures of the bones because a large part of your lecture and lab is noting the structures and not just the names of the bones. So as detailed as you can, describe the structure and placement um, of the sphenoid bone.